I'm here to introduce a couple of wines um, from our Australasian producers. Um, one of Corny's key principles is our relationships. So be that our relationships with our colleagues or you, our lovely customers, um, and also our producers. So for these wines, um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the producers, their story, and then of course, kind of a bit more technical information on the wines. So the first two wines are from Muddy Water, um, the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir. Muddy Water isn't really the most appetizing name of a wine or a product, um, but a few of you will be familiar with the Waipara Valley. Um, this is in the South Island of New Zealand, in the Canterbury region. And Muddy Water is actually just a translation from the Maori word uh, Waipara. So that is the Muddy Water, that's the name. So it's, and a big thing for them is coming from that terroir, from that soil, from that name, um, and making fantastic wines. So the East family um, bought the plot in 1993, I think. Uh, planted a bunch of vines. I mean, the benefit of starting out a vineyard from scratch was they could do quite a lot of trial and error. So they planted a whole bunch of different types of grape varieties and then had the ability to pick and choose which was growing well and what wasn't. So it left them with four main grape varieties, which is Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, two wines that we're trying this evening, um, and then Aligote, and not Aligote, sorry, Riesling and Pinotage. Um, so that is a great benefit. Uh, and their first vintage was in 1998. And they kind of were the forerunners of a premium wine in New Zealand. Quite a lot of wine at the time was kind of bulk produced um, for a mass market. And they wanted to make something a bit more bespoke um, that really spoke of the terroir. So they have 12 hectares of vineyards there. Um, yeah, please do ask questions, don't be shy. No questions too silly. I might not have the answers, but give it a go. Um, 12 hectares of vines, and they, they were the first people in Canterbury to be certified organic uh, farming. That was in 2011, I think. So um, it's a very small production, even in New Zealand terms, even in European terms, 12 hectares is tiny. They produce about 22,000 bottles a year across their whole range. Um, everything is hand-picked and they try to do minimal intervention in the vineyard, really let the terroir sing. Um, and they try not to filter much of their red wine. So, onto the fun bit. Let's start with Chardonnay. Um, so, it's this lovely golden colour, kind of golden with little flecks of sunlight, um, beautiful colour that comes from really ripe grapes. They have a very long growing season in New Zealand um, with cold nights but warm summer days which allow a really beautiful ripe fruit. Um, so on the nose it's, it's just so appealing. Um, it's kind of toasted almonds almost, that ripe stone fruit um, and also almost Butterscotch, butterscotch notes. It's just so inviting. I absolutely love this wine. Um, and then it's that beautiful creamy mouthfeel, um, thanks to the malolactic fermentation. So they so they press their vines, uh, grapes, and then immediately put them into oak barrels. So there's no stainless steel fermentation. Um, both the primary and the secondary malolactic fermentation are in oak barrels. Um, they're all French oak, so very fine grain, um, which gives that really lovely, smooth, fine texture. Um, and they're aged on the leaves for 11 months. So they're very Burgundian style, but that extra sunshine and warmth in New Zealand comes through and is that riper, sunny, it just tastes like sunshine. Um, so a, a precise palette, but also with that kind of exotic, fruity, fruity notes from the sunshine, um, but it's a brilliant structure as well. There's enough acidity. It's just a really, really well made wine, um, I think. And at £22.95 a bottle, it's, it's brilliant. 
I mean, if this was in Burgundian territory, you'll be paying at least double. Um, so it's, I love it. Um, I've got the Pinot Noir here. Um, this, again, is all hand harvested and it is, so they do a thing um, called a, dry, a cold soak of the grapes um, for four to five days before fermentation, which really increases the concentration of the colour, it's that really vibrant red colour, uh, and the flavour. So it kind of just traps the freshness in it. Um, and that is also kind of, some New World Pinot Noirs go crazy in alcohol percentage. Um, and this is at 13% alcohol, which is, which is brilliant. And also from that cold press, uh, then they, they leave it on the skins after being pressed for about 18 to 24 days, depending on the vintage. And then it's aged in French oak barrels again for a year and a half, I think. Um, so on the nose, you get that lovely ripe berry fruit, but also that oaky spice kind of shines through. Um, big thanks to that French oak um, and a brilliant aging time. I mean, a year and a half is, is brilliant. Um, Almost a kind of savoury note on the nose as well. And then on the palate, it's very rounded, has that nice little lift at the end. Super light tannins that just kind of melt away, melt in the mouth. Um, it's a very Moorish glass of wine. Um, now, on to Little Tacker. So, Little Tacker is an Australian wine. Um, made by Barossa Boy in the Barossa Valley. Um, Trent Burge is the Barossa Boy behind this bottle. He, he first kind of came to our attention. He, he used to come to England playing cricket. Every summer he'd come play for an English cricket club and then he'd go back and work on the vines at home. He comes, he's fifth generation winemaker in the Barossa Valley. So winemaking's in his blood. Once he'd kind of given up the season air cricket thing, um, he worked in the family vineyard for a while, and then in 2016, he started his own venture called Barossa Boy in the Barossa Valley. Um, and each wine he has produced tells a chapter, a story from a chapter in his life. Um, so the little tacker is a homage to his childhood. Um, I don't know if those of you have got the wine in front of you. Um, he's the little boy on the bike. You see a cricketer in, in the background too. Um, and little Tacker, I believe, is Aussie for like cheeky little boy. Um, he was known as the little Tacker growing up. His parents, his grandparents, he was always the cheeky little Tacker. Tacker. Um, and so, so this is him. Um, it's a Grenache Syrah Mouvedre blend, the classic Rhone blend um, that is so popular in Australia. And uh, it's about 50% Grenache and then a quarter Syrah and a quarter Mouvedre. Um, so again, here's one I prepared earlier, my little glass of wine. Um, it's, I mean, obviously different grapes, it's a completely different smell, um, different winemaking method as well they tend to um they work like a they work with producers who they've been working with for a long time great growers but then they actually do the wine making themselves um whereas muddy water do everything on site they kind of buy in the grapes um not say that that's anything to the quality but it's a different way of working um again this is aged in oak barrels uh they're a bit more vague with kind of ratios and quantities they say a little bit new oak a little bit old oak a little bit french a little bit american i don't know i think they just chuck it all together um but still it's a it's a lovely wine very inviting on the nose um again sunshine brings that lovely ripe fruit um fruit to the nose ripe raspberries almost get that kind of but you know have a chocolate torte and then put some raspberries on top that's kind of what i'm smelling the raspberry coolie, that's what it's called. Um, lovely. 
Um, I've got, I actually had this slightly chilled and it's brilliant. It's not quite a summer's day up here, but on a summer's day, um, slightly chilled. I think it's delicious. And that's, and the oak gives that lovely vanilla-y kind of smoky vanilla um, mouthfeel. Very super soft, fine tannins that melt away. Super appealing. But also it's 14% alcohol, so it does pack a punch. Um, there we go.